good evening, everyone. My name is Happy Haynes, and I'm the very proud executive director of Denver Parks and Recreation. Uh, and thank you. Uh, we're in, we're, you're in our home and in your home tonight. I am so excited on behalf of Mayor Michael Hancock, who is out of town and he's sorry he couldn't be here tonight, to welcome all of you to the grand opening of the Levitt Pavilion. Yeah. What a great crowd. I didn't even have to prompt you or, or make you do it again. So. I see that you're all warmed up. These kids warmed you up well, didn't they? Let's give them another hand. Thank you. So a couple of special welcomes and shout outs uh, this evening. And I am really here this, tonight on behalf of Mayor Hancock to acknowledge the people who helped get us to this special occasion tonight. First. I want to uh, welcome and give a great big shout out to our extraordinary partner uh, in, in uh, Denver Parks and Recreation and in this city, the councilman of this district, Jolyn Clark. You'll hear from him in just a few moments. Uh, we have some other council members here that I would like to, to uh, uh, introduce as well. Please. Raise your hands and then please give them a warm a round of applause. Uh, Councilman Flynn, Kevin Flynn is, is here. Councilwoman Stacy Gilmore. Councilwoman Lo, uh, Councilman Lopez. Uh, Councilman Paul Cashman. I know he got here early and staked out his place out here. Uh, and, and then again to our friends from Levitt uh, Pavilions who are here in great numbers. And their presence here tonight really says it all about how special an occasion this is in Denver. Uh, we also have here tonight uh, Commander Mark Fleece, who's the district commander of District 4, and we want to thank you, Commander Fleece, and the, your entire team. I saw a number of members of our Parks and Rec Advisory Board members here. Please raise your hands. They help. Uh, support all of our parks throughout Denver. Thank you for being here this evening. When this idea was just a gleam in their eyes, I'm imagining that this scene right here tonight, this evening, is exactly what they visualized. It is perfect Colorado evening for some music in one of Denver's gems of a park. And what you are, your presence here tonight just confirms what we know and that is Denverites love their parks and they love the outdoors. And with more than 250 parks in our park system, we take pride in creating these opportunities to combine parks and the outdoors with arts and culture. Now I know for those of you who live in the neighborhood, I'm preaching to the choir, but Ruby Hill Park was once a hidden gem in Colorado, but no more. It is one of our premier parks with outdoor recreation, with a world-class bike park just to the south of us. A rail yard, so when we're not out here on a summer evening in the middle of winter, this park is alive with kids and, and adults ski, learning how to ski down the hills of this park. And just, we have a wonderful picnic facility and thanks to the citizens of Denver, so many other improvements that have made this park one of the most special parks in our Denver system. And so we're glad to be here tonight to add music to the list of incredible virtues of this great Ruby Hill Park. Yeah, always, always, always clap for Ruby Hill Park.
I, I think I said at the groundbreaking, I shared how this is, I live all the way on the other side of town in northeast Denver, and I remember coming here as a kid uh, to sled down this mountain, and so it is, it has always had a special place in my heart. This kind of a facility does not happen without a lot of effort, and I want to start by thanking the most important contributors to that, this process, and that is the citizens of Denver who voted in 2007 for the Better Denver Bonds. So give yourselves a round of applause. I want to thank and acknowledge Sharon Yazowski, who is the executive director of the Levitt Foundation, and Chris Zacker, who have partnered together at every step of the way. And you'll hear uh, from Chris later, and you'll hear from, uh, uh, from the Levitts as well. We would not be here tonight without the partnership with the Levitt Pavilion Foundation. So let's give them a great round of applause. And for those of you who've been watching, you know this went up amazingly quickly. And the people who are responsible for that are Studio Trope Design Collective, who designed our construction manager and general contractor, Franz and Pittman. So some of you who are with these teams, please raise your hands and be acknowledged. I want to thank Bar Chadwick from our Department of Finance and Scott and Steve Hergenrader from the Bond Office. I saw him here earlier tonight. Raise your hands and be acknowledged uh, for, your, uh, for your role in helping get to this evening. The staff at Public Works who led this project, uh, starting with George Delaney, Dave Huntsinger, I saw Dave over here. Raise your hand, Dave and Rohini Saxena, I saw her here. Thank you so much for your efforts in leading this project. They've been working right alongside of our park staff to make this amazing facility happen. I want to acknowledge the Parks and Recreation staff. Scott Gilmore, the Deputy Exec Executive Director of Parks is here. John Martinez, the Deputy Executive Director of Recreation is here tonight. Gordon Robertson, the Director of Planning, Parks Planning, is here. Adrian Burton, who was a, one of the project managers, and, and Jeru Parikh, who was here earlier tonight. Let's give them all a shout out. Thank you. They helped make this concept become a reality. And behind the scenes are the people who take care of this amazing Park. Doug Woods, our Director of Maintenance and Operations. Jill Kaufman, whose team uh, leads this effort. Abby McNeil, Deke Brown, and Mike Sabin are all people who make sure that this place looks wonderful as it does tonight. Thank them. You will see our park rangers here uh, helping to remind us the best ways to enjoy our wonderful parks and our marketing team, Yolanda Quesada and Laura Morales. And I'm sorry to say to the, young, uh, the youngsters here and to Andy Thomas uh, tonight that uh, Laura Morales was really the first performer on this stage. Yesterday when they were testing the system, she uh, entertained everybody with a great song, and I understand we have quite a bit of talent in our department. <laughs> and now I would like to introduce another extraordinary partner in this emerging of parks and outdoors and arts and culture, and that is Kent Rice, who leads our uh, arts and venues uh, department and who's been a terrific partner and uh, I can't say enough about your partnership, Kent. Uh, Kent, thank you so much. Thanks, Happy. So I work for Mayor Hancock just like uh, Happy and a lot of the people that she acknowledged. I run the city's arts and venues department, so we are in charge of, as it sounds, venues, although not this one, and the arts and culture program. 
part of that program has to do with lifting up people in Denver and around Denver in any way that reflects art and culture. And what else could lift us up better than opening this amazing facility tonight? I can't think of a thing. Um, I've been looking at this project and watching it with the number of the people on stage for more than five years. So to see it develop and have it open tonight is really, really a big deal. One of the amazing things about the city of Denver is that we do have a 1% for public art program. So every city funded construction project that's over a million dollars has 1% of that dedicated to public art. That's why I'm going to give you just a couple words about public art. Thank you. And yeah, some applause for our public art team. That's here, Michael Chavez and his team. And also next to him is Lisa Gedgaudis, who works in the music industry with us and serves on the board with Chris Acker and a bunch of other people. She's been a steady supporter of this as well. Lisa, thank you. So what's the public art? Unfortunately, it's not quite ready, so I, I can't turn around and point at it. But the artists are here. I'll introduce them in a moment. The piece is called Sky Song. It's incredibly innovative, and I think it's so appropriate tonight when we've got this unbelievable sky, and it's going to be followed with more songs, that the piece that they've created is called Sky Song. It blends light and sound through interaction, which means when it's finished in a few weeks, you guys will be able to help engage the art. So it's not static, it is dynamic. It's really unique. It's a great piece of art. Um, there are 33 buttons, and when you press them, if there's not a concert going on, it will create sound, and when there is, it will create light, and it will be right around there. Um, th there they are, the two artists. So the guys who created this, make sure I got their names right, Nick Gertz and Ryan Elmendorf. Did I do that right? All right. My work is done. Um, Thank you guys so much. Uh, this is a really innovative piece of public art. We get a lot of opportunity in the city to create something that is site-specific and relevant to what's going on. These guys have figured it out. Um, and in a few weeks, you'll be able to come back and explore and see what it means. Yeah, that might be about, it's gonna be 30 feet tall, by the way. Let me see if I omitted anything vital. Oh, 25 lights and bells, so of course there's lights and music and song so lights bells interaction you guys will love it love it love it it's time for me to hand it off so here's the deal joel and clark your councilman i'm representing lucky district seven i know you're not all from this district but this guy is he's awesome elected two years ago loves this project loves his constituents joel and clark Thank you. Thank you. I, I can't tell you how excited I am to say welcome to the Levitt Pavilion Denver in the heart of Lucky District 7. This has been a long time coming. There are a lot of people up here. There are a lot of people out there who made that happen. But I got to give a shout out to my predecessor who represented Lucky District 7 for eight years prior to me, who really had the kernel of an idea and to stand here today. So let's give it up for Chris Nevitt, the Honorable. And everybody who's ever been on council or known the councilman knows that we don't do anything without our awesome team and Valerie Kearns who used to be Lucky District 7 now with the Honorable Paul Cashman in District 6. Let's give it up for Valerie. A lot of love, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears from those two to make this happen. Uh, my history on City Council with this project is only two years deep but long before that I worked for the greatest nonprofit uh, organization in the world, the Greenway Foundation. Anybody ever been on the trail down by the river down there? Anybody ever caught a fish in a river that was dead 35 years ago? Because my son catches them all the time, and that's because the Greenway Foundation and Jeff Shoemaker and his dad before him, Joe Shoemaker, has invested and invested in a river that was forgotten. And what you might not know about this pavilion is Jeff stepped in with the Greenway Foundation to allow this organization 
the Friends of Lepid Denver to start taking donations while they were applying for their 501c3 to start raising money to make this happen. So it's not just the river, also help make this happen. Thank you, Jeff Shoemaker, Greenway. But my history with this park goes back even before that because like Happy, our awesome parks director, I spent my childhood over here sledding down the hill. And then when I stepped right out of college and started doing field trips for the Greenway Foundation, I took thousands and thousands of second graders on field trips to Ruby Hill Park for over a decade. And when I was bringing kids here, it didn't look like this. I brought groups of kids here and it'd be me and 60 kids and one day we showed up and we took lunch at the old playground and there were bullet holes in every single piece of playground equipment. Another day I showed up and somebody had come through and tagged and they had tagged the wall. They had tagged every tree in the park was tagged. And one morning I was here with 60 second graders up right there where that pavilion is now before it was there trying to teach them about the history of our city and the revitalization of our river at 11 o'clock in the morning and a car pulled off the road and started doing donuts in the grass and we had to run for cover. And this community, and let's hear it for our, my Ruby Hill people in the house. And we, I know I see Overland, Athbar Park in the house. The citizens, the citizens of this community, of these neighborhoods stood up and said, we want more. We deserve more, and we're going to get more. And, and uh, it was Scott Bolt, president, one of the co-presidents of uh, Ruby Hill, somewhere in here. We, right there, just earlier, we were up at the top with, the, with a bunch of people celebrating. And what did he say? He said, you know what? I never would have imagined this when he started be getting involved in this. And I'm sure nobody could. And he said, you know what? They, they can't overlook us anymore in this community. And I'll tell you that's so true because I've had some of my colleagues come up to me and say, wait a second, brand new pavilion, epic uh, new playground, a new loop trail, and now a pavilion. Why does Ruby Hill get everything? And that was not the story five years ago or 10 years ago. And that is because of all of you. So let's give it up for the citizens of this awesome community. I'm a little excited, I'm a little pumped up, but I know the last thing you want is to hear more of this. We wanna hear some music. So I'm gonna give the microphone over here. And, and I gotta say that this is the Levitt Pavilion because of the Levitt family and because of their vision and their dream and, and what they have done. And this is, by the way, the seventh Levitt Pavilion in the, in, in the country. Not by coincidence, the seventh in Lucky District 7. But that is only possible because a family had a dream that the arts, that access to the arts, that the access to live music should not be only for those who can afford it. It should be for each and every person in our community. There should be no walls. There should be no barriers. So I want everybody to look over at all these people sitting on the other side of the fence and let's make sure they know it's free. Come on in, it's free. And 50 times a year, it's going to be free. And that's because of this family. This is with us today in Denver, Liz Levitt of the Levitt family. Let's give it up, Denver South. I must tell you everything that Colin just said is absolutely right on. It is about community. And the reason the Levitt is here is because the city, the private leadership, the foundations came together and said, this is what we want for our Ruby Hill Park, for our citizens of Denver. Our model is community-based. We are honored, deeply honored, to be part of this opening and to be partners with the Friends of Levitt Pavilion Denver. It, it is now my pleasure to introduce to you the chairman 
of the board of Friends of Livid Pavilion Denver who will be here day in and day out as a private citizen to win support and growth and ensure the sustainability of Denver's Levitt Pavilion. Colin Milkey. All right, thank you everybody. And I'm gonna take out my handy pieces of paper here because I have a lot of people to thank. My name's Colin Milkey, I'm with the Friends of Levitt Pavilion Denver. And we're the nonprofit that's going to be running the programming at this pavilion. So this pavilion, it's owned by the city of Denver, but all these concerts that you see are going to be put on by... Closer to the microphone. Can you all hear me? All right. <laughs> and so we are the private nonprofit that's running all the programming at the venue here. So the city owns the pavilion. We're putting on the programming for the community. Now, I've been involved with Levitt Pavilion Denver for about four years now. And I got to tell you, when I started, it was sketches on a piece of paper. And to see the pavilion the way that it is now, it's incredible. And, and beyond my wildest dreams, I didn't think it would look this beautiful. But um, one of the things that's even more incredible than this pavilion before you is the people and the organizations that help make this a reality. So I have a lot of people to thank tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do so uh, judiciously here. But we need to start out first and foremost by thanking two very important people, Councilman Clark and Councilman Chris Nevitt. Can I get a hand of applause? Yes, applause for all of them, please. These two councilmen, I, I got the, the pleasure of working with both of them. They are the backbone of this pavilion. And they supported it with the dedication that we've seen time and again from them for everything related to District 7 and the Denver community as a whole. So Councilman Nevitt, wherever you are out there, Councilman Clark, thank you so much for your unwavering dedication to this pavilion and this venue. It's beautiful. In addition, I want to thank our board of directors, our committee members, and their families, uh, people that have put in a lot of hours and time in a dream uh, that they've now seen as reality. A special thanks to Valerie Kearns again, also Bailey Smith, Drew Palmer, and Scott Aller. These people have put in a tremendous amount of hours with our executive committee, and I really couldn't have done anything, and we couldn't have done anything, but for their diligence and, and frankly, just their generosity with their time. So thank you very much. Also... I'm not done yet. <laughs> Lots more to thank. Um, I want to thank our national partner, Levitt Pavilions, uh, particularly Sharon Yazowski, the executive director, Liz Levitt as well. These people have been with us since the beginning, and I got to tell you, the, the expertise that they provided to us, uh, the local nonprofit, from the beginning is absolutely phenomenal. So thank you so much for your partnership. And as Councilman Clark said, we're the seventh Levitt, Levitt Pavilion in the country. So there were others before us. There are going to be others after us. But we have a few of them, actually, a, a, I think close to 50 or 60 uh, representatives of other Levitt Pavilions here tonight. And I just want to, want to call out the Levitt Pavilions that we have representing us because we are so grateful for them making the trips from their respective parts of the country to join us tonight. We have Dayton, Ohio. We have Sioux Falls, Houston. Memphis, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Fort Lauderdale, San Jose, and Los Angeles. So thank you very much for making the trip out here. All right, next up, I need to give a big thank you on behalf of Friends of Levitt Pavilion Denver to all of our partners with the city of Denver. I want to thank Scott Gilmore, Fred Weiss, Scott Hergenrader, and Steve Hergenrader for their leadership throughout this entire project. And I know there are many, many other people in the city that have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure that this pavilion was built. And I gotta tell you, I, I hadn't worked much with the city of Denver before this, but it, when you look at the city staff members that have 
uh, worked on this project and other projects throughout the city. In my book, they are the gold standard when it comes to public servants. I have never worked with a group of people that have bent over backwards and gone the extra mile more than the city staff at Denver. And again, we could not have done this without the city. They've been a fantastic partner, and we're looking forward to making them proud by putting on some great programming for the years to come. Also, I have to thank our amazing staff, our executive director, Chris Zacker. Yes. A big round of applause for Chris, because i tell you what. There is not a person in this city that has more passion for this project than Chris Zacker. And he's, yes. And, and he's built a tremendous team around him that share that same passion for building community through music. And I, I think I can speak for all of us here tonight that we're excited to see that passion show when we start our programming here in just a few minutes. So lastly, well not lastly, sorry. <laughs> I got another page here, but it'll be quick. <laughs> we need to give a giant thank you to all of our sponsors, our donors, our volunteers. Without all of you, we would not be here today. We are so grateful for all of your energy and your input. And we're looking forward to showing off our accomplishments here throughout the rest of the season. All right, and the last page is the most important here. So I want to remind everybody here, out in the audience, that this is your pavilion. We are going to work hard to be good stewards of this pavilion and put on some great programming. But this venue will never reach its full potential without the active involvement of our community members. This is why it was built because of all of you. And so you truly are going to be the soul of this venue. So come here often, meet your neighbors, make your visits a family tradition to this pavilion, be inspired, support your local artists, and know that we are truly grateful for your support of Levitt Pavilion Denver and Ruby Hill Park. Thank you very much, everybody. And now I'll pass it on to our executive director, Chris Sacker. How's everybody doing out there? I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you're going to hear a lot from me over the coming years because I'm not going anywhere. And they've already thanked everybody that I wanted to thank. So I'm going to make this really quick. And I am the last one. You don't have to wait till we get to the end of the line. I know that we did this for music, and I want to talk. I just want to shout out some very important people to this project: Tim Colin with Colorado Harvest Company, <laughs> Ralph Morgan with Open Bay, <laughs> Gary Stewart with the Bond B. Stanton Foundation, <laughs> Scott Aller <laughs> from Levitt Pavilion Denver's board, Ryan Anderson, Levitt Pavilion Denver's board, <laughs> Sharon Yazowski from the Levitt Foundation. Colin Milkey, our board president. Liz Levitt, who helped this dream come true. Jolin Clark, he's the only guy in Denver who talks more than me. Kent Rice, Denver Arts and Venues. Kent, Kent runs and, and, and operates Red Rocks, and he's on our stage tonight. I served on City Park Jazz's board for a long time with Happy Haynes. And I love this woman and she is fantastic for our city. Our deputy mayor, Happy Haynes. Thank you, Happy. I'd also like to thank some people who aren't here, the, the Gates Family Foundation and the Betcher Foundation. The, all of these groups put so much time, energy, and money into this. Pete Turner, where are you, Pete? Do you guys like Illegal Pete's burritos? <laughs> Pete Turner believed in you. So go to his place and eat his burritos. They're the best in town. The folks at Colorado Public Radio, my partners with Emporium Presents, Dan Steinberg and Jason Zink, Becky Migas, Aaron Reynolds, all of them. Thank you. Uh, my entire board, past, present, and future, because I know there's future board members out here. Uh, I'm going to thank four more people, and then I'm done. <laughs> 
I'd like to thank Sydney Linden, uh, my assistant, for putting up with me every day. I'd like to thank Andy Thomas, who's going to play the first note on this stage. Andy is our director of community outreach. If you got a problem, call Andy. Don't call me. <laughs> I could not have done this project without the love and support of my wife and my son, who can't be here tonight. And I want to thank them. And lastly, my partner in crime, my man. I, I honestly could not do this without Chase Wessel. Chase books the music. Chase hauls everything in here. Chase works until 2 o'clock in the morning and shows back up at 6. He never complains. He never takes a day off. He flew his sister in from Arizona to watch his brand new baby. And he, lo and, he, and he made me hire his wife as our bar manager. So pretty soon, we may be calling this thing the Wessel. Chase has been part of the Levitt family for years. He ran uh, production for the Levitt in Pasadena and the Levitt in LA. And I was so, so lucky that, that this Colorado native really didn't like living in California. This is your venue, this is your park. I wanna see kids rolling down that hill, frisbees being thrown. If you're sitting outside this fence, come in. This is your house. Thank you all so much. Let's have a great night. Oh, I got, we got three bands here tonight. We got a little bit of nepotism because Andy Thomas' dust heart is going to kick it off and it's the same Andy who runs our community outreach. <laughs> and we got Halden Walford in the high beams. And then I know I see a lot of Slim fans here. The godfathers of the Colorado Sound, Slim Cessna's Auto Club. And when we cut this ribbon in a second, the Denver Municipal Band is going to lead us in a little trumpet. So thank you all for coming, and I want you to come back often. And remember that none of this works without your support. So come in and support our food trucks and put money in the buckets and dance and have fun, man. This is what it's all about. Yeah.